All right, so today we're going to take a look at a rational expression, um, which can be handled in more than one way. I want to do sort of the more efficient way. Um, so notice I've got a fraction minus a fraction divided by some other fractions. And so just sort of conceptually, I could add the top, add the denominator, and then do a divide, which would, which would be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a faster way to do it, which is to sort of recognize all of the little denominators. So notice I've got a p squared, a p squared minus 4, a p squared, and a 1. And so I could ask myself, what's the lowest common multiple or the lowest common, you can call it the lowest common denominator here, among all of these little baby denominators. And so obviously um, I need a p squared. So what I'm after is something that p squared goes into. So p squared, p squared goes into p squared once. And then I come to this next denominator and I say, well, I need something that p squared minus 4 goes into. And p squared is not the answer, so I have to incorporate a p squared minus 4. Come to 1, well, 1 goes into anything, and p squared goes into this, so I don't need to build it up any further. I want the lowest common multiple or divisor, so that should be good. So p squared onto p squared minus 4 becomes the lowest common denominator of all the little baby denominators. So what I could do is sort of think of the bigger, bigger fraction and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the lowest common multiple. Because really, all I'll, all I'll be doing here is multiplying by 1. So if I was to multiply by p squared times p squared minus 4 in the top, and p squared times p squared minus 4 in the denominator, then watch what I can do. I can expand that through in the numerator, and I can also expand it through in the denominator. And so if I multiply this by the first term, 3 over p squared, the p squareds will cancel, leaving 3 times this difference of squares. So I'll get 3 times p squared minus 4. And then minus, I'll multiply this by the second fraction in the numerator. Notice the p squared minus 4s will cancel, leaving p squared. p squared times 1 is p squared. That will be all over. Now that's kind of nice because I cleared the denominators in the numerator. I can do that for the denominator here as well, multiplying this by this. Well, there's nothing to cancel, so in the first term I'll have to rewrite the entire p squared onto p squared minus 4, and then minus the p squared cancels with the p squared, leaving a 6 times what's left over after cancellation, which is p squared minus 4. All right. Well, now I've, at least I only have one fraction. I don't have a bunch of fractions going on. So what I could do is simplify the numerator. So um, in the numerator, I could um, expand that through. And that's going to leave a 3p squared minus 12. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 minus p squared over, I do notice there's a common factor here. So in the denominator, it could be written as p squared minus 4 multiplied by p squared minus 6. Do you see p squared minus 4 is common, so I'm factoring it out. And then if I divide this by that common factor, I'm left with p squared. And same here, if I divide this by p squared minus 4, I'm left with negative 6. Okay, onward and upward. The numerator can be simplified. So 3p squared minus p squared is 2p squared minus 12 all over, I'm just going to save the denominator. <laughs> I'm a little bit lazy. And so here I'm going to take out a 2 in the numerator. So 2 bracket p squared minus 6 over the denominator, which I'll write. So p squared minus 4 times p squared minus 6 and this is kind of nice because look, you can see that these cancel. The p squared minus 6's cancel, and that simply leaves a 2 over p squared minus 4. Now, I want to address restrictions or non permissible values because if you're learning this, you're probably also being taught non permissible values 
or restrictions, non-permissible values, NPVs. Those are the numbers that P are not allowed to take on because generally with rationals, you can't divide by zero. So to do that, we can look at all of these individual denominators. So P squared, well, that's P times P. So I know that P cannot be equal to zero. So you're, you're, you're looking at the individual denominators, do you see? And the same here, P squared minus four. So P squared minus four is not allowed to be equal to zero. Well, that implies that P squared cannot be equal to four or P cannot be equal to plus or minus two. Now, at this stage, it's easy to miss two other restrictions. But remember, when you're dividing rationals, you get restrictions. If I have A over B, all over C over D, then I pick up restrictions or non-permissible values in the traditional denominators. But because C over D is also a denominator in its totality, C cannot be zero either, okay? So what I'm gonna be careful with here is if I was to add these together, if I was to add the denominator together, do you see what would end up happening is I'll just write it here. The denominator would be P squared, but the numerator of that would be P squared minus six. So the P squared minus six is like the C. So not only can P squared minus four not be equal to zero, but P squared minus six can't be equal to zero. And the restriction there would be that P cannot be equal to plus or minus the square root of six. Okay, it's unlikely if you're learning this in grade 10 that your teacher is gonna take you into radicals, um, depending on where you're learning this, of course, what country. Uh, but it gives you the concept that when you're looking for restrictions, you have to look at the B, the C, and the D. The A does not get a restriction. All right, if that was helpful, please slap a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you right back here in the next video.